We live in the times of ever expanding data and when there's data there's analytics on top of it. Hello all this is Upasana from Edureka and I'll be taking you through the Power BI desktop. But before we begin let's take a quick look at the outline of this tutorial. First I'll be talking a little bit about BI then the what's and why's surrounding it. From there we'll briefly discuss the Power BI desktop and finally I'll be doing a complete step by step breakdown of creating a dashboard followed by a demo taking some real time facts and figures. So without any further ado let's skip right to the tutorial. Now I'm sure a lot of you might wonder why do we need Power BI. So we need Power BI because of three main reasons. Firstly it makes machine learning accessible to end users. No need to know complex coding if you're not a technical person. Secondly. Power BI includes predictive analytics, data visualizations, and R integration along with data analysis, which makes it a pretty easy tool to use. And finally, it's mobility. It's a cloud based service, so you can create a report or dashboards on the go. So, what is Power BI? It's basically a cloud based business intelligence service by Microsoft, which provides non technical business users with tools for aggregation analysis data sharing and visualization. Moving on this is essentially what the tutorial is all about the Power BI desktop. Now the Power BI desktop is Microsoft's new end in analytics tool. So it allows you to connect to all these interesting data both traditional and non traditional sources and put it into something similar to a data workbook. It basically lets you connect to transform and visualize data. So let's have a look at the demo. So this is what it looks like the Power BI desktop as I'd formally mentioned. It is an analytics tool where you can bring heterogeneous data into a single platform. Here's how you download it. You just go to powerbi.com and then go to the downloads page and click on this button right there simple. You could just be a free user like I am. You can see the differences between being a free user and a paid user. There's not much of a difference if you ask me, except for the data capacity. So let's go to our Power BI desktop. So this is what it looks like. So what you see here when you open the Power BI desktop are these tutorial videos on building reports, query view concepts, but you don't need those videos because you're watching this video. Just kidding, you should really go watch these videos. It shows some really interesting stuff there. So, the first thing you do in order to connect to data sources is you use the Get Data button. You've got all these data sources here to connect to. You've got your Excel, CSV, Azure. You can even scrape data off web pages. So, lots of neat stuff. Now, I'll be using a CSV file here. Let's get a CSV file for my data model. Now I've already downloaded these CSV files from their respective government sites. You can do so as well to play around with your Power BI desktop. Here you can even edit it right now if you want to. I'm going to save it for later. I'm just going to load it into my model. This will take some time. So when you first load your data you kind of see a blank screen right here. On the left you see three basic views. You've got the report view here. This is where you'll be creating your dashboard. Next, you have the data view here. Here is where you can make changes to your data if you want to change column names, data types, control the sorting of it. This is also where you come if you want to create new calculated columns. And finally, you have the relationship view here. This is where you can see the relationship if you have multiple objects. Of course, we have only one object here, so no relationships. So I'm going back to the data view here. You basically are getting the preview of what your data looks like. So I want to point out a few things. First thing I'll be renaming these columns because we are building the dashboard for the user and all the naming conventions and data types are going to appear at the surface to our user and we want it to be as interactive as possible. So let's just make a few changes here. Renaming is the usual your right click and rename. I'll just quickly rename these columns. Now that'll look good on a report. Also, there's another thing anything that's not absolutely necessary for the model, 
just delete it because they're going to contribute to the size of the model and hence take up more resources while processing here let's delete this because this is a blank column so i'm sure this as well because this is of no use to me also you can hide a column if you want to here i'll be hiding this column mostly because i need it later for calculation purposes but this isn't really that important for the users to see again you can right click and go hide it in report view now as you can see this entire column has turned gray because it won't be visible to us in the report view after all the formatting this is what our data looks like i'll be going to the modeling field out here and i'll be adding a new column let's call it the count column because we'll be needing the numbers you can also add calculated columns right here another thing i'll be doing is changing the data types of these two columns because these two are geographical data and if we don't change the data category our power bi desktop is going to assume that they are only values so let's go to this data category field out here and change it into geographical data all set i think we are done all right so this looks good i don't want to spend much time on this i only wanted to show you the gist of how you can make these changes to our model so once i'm done with all the transformations i'll go back to the report view in the earlier models there used to be the close and load button but here you don't need it anymore with that i think we're ready to start the fun part which is creating our dashboard this is actually pretty easy to work with so if i want to create a chart all i have to do is select a chart from here right now it's all gray because all the fields are empty but we can drag the categories to our legend field here and then the count to our values the count will mostly always be in the values field because that is what it's meant for and here you have the pie chart you can change it into any other chart if you want to but we are going to stick to the pie chart because that's what we need here let's take another chart for example i'll take the column chart here all right we'll put the category on the axis or let's just do it with locations this time we can put that on the axis and then we can do the count value here let's just reduce the size of this you can also change the color of this graph over here you could just go here and go to data colors this is the default color i would want to change it to something say blue let's make it a little easy for our color blind fans it's easier for them to spot here's another interesting graph that i wanted to always try this is the tree map which is also called the clustered bar graph this is almost like the pie chart but in my opinion this has a better visual just in my opinion that is hence let's just put it here remember when i spoke about the whole machine learning bit this is what i was talking about you can just select a category in any of the graphs and it is going to mark the same in all the different graphs and show you the numbers if you want you can also ask a question this is one of the features which has been introduced in the newer versions of this you can type say anti social anti social behavior and it will give you the whole entire list of the anti social behavior so it's pretty interactive as as interactive as you can make it for now we don't need this okay let's go to another page so let's go try some other graphs to make sure you get a better feel of it so this is what i was most interested for this is why we changed the data category of the latitude and longitude this is the maps for power bi all you have to do is take your geographical values and it's pretty much self explanatory you can put the latitude in the latitude field here the longitude in the longitude field here and it shows exactly where each crime has happened just add a little color to it we can let's see yes there we go now with each color you can see the different kind of crimes because the, every category is assigned a different color if you have too much data say about 5000 rows of data you can also use filters over here i'll show you how to use it you can just add the category here 
and then using basic filtering you can just see each category there's the burglary antisocial behavior burglary drug abuse so like that you can check one two or three of these boxes and see wherever the crime has happened again by going to each of these dots or bubbles out here you can see the latitude longitude and the category of the crime so let's try a few other graphs i hope by now a lot of you are getting a hang of it so let's quickly go through these graphs here okay let's try the funnel graph this is one of the things which are also really interesting because you can change the saturation along with the numbers in a minute i'll show you what i'm talking about here again put the categories in the group field and the count and the values as usual and in the color saturation we can put count of the categories you can also change the sort of data you want but we keep it this way now what we can see here is all these crimes which are above a thousand in number they are all colored blue it keeps getting more red as it decreases and blue as it increases this is basically how a funnel shaped graph works let's try a few other things let's try a donut graph it's kind of like a pie chart and used for the same purposes only looks different it's a visual preference to be honest so here when you put categories in the legend field it basically assigns colors to different categories here if i remove the category and i add say location or even better let's just add street names here this is how your donut chart will look like because there's so many roads they all been assigned different colors and on or near the supermarket seems to have been the hub of all criminals let's just add another chart to finish this let's add a line chart so when we put anything in the legend tab it is ideally supposed to appear here with the colors with every line here you can see on whatever street whatever crime has been happening and the number of crimes that have been happening in each category if you just select like say one color here it narrows it down in each graph over here so this is basically how interactive this tool is and you can just double click to get your regular graph and now we are ready to deploy this to our power bi site and let's just save this first save as so let's go to our initial page and just name this dashboard we can just insert a text box here crime spotting in camden we can change the font size and the font type the usual i'm going to go for a 60 size and i'm going to bolden it whatever looks good for the dashboard okay so i think we should save it now and now i think we are ready to deploy this to our power bi site so let's go ahead and publish it and for anyone to be able to do this we need to sign in to our power bi account so this will just take a few moments it shows success let's open it in our power bi so as you can see it's as interactive as it was before it looks the same way you can use it the same way you can use the same filters you can use the same slicers the same colors so i guess this is it then so to summarize we looked at how we can use the power bi desktop app to import data into our model format it remodel it edit our query and use our model in the dashboard type report i hope by now all of you are ready for the demo So the demo says you're a business analyst who is assigned to a Medicare which is your client and they need you to create a live interactive dashboard from the data set they are providing you with it should have your drug definition the city state and appropriate values and costs covered for the total number of patients that are admitted in various hospitals in different areas so let's see how we can do it the usual we're going to get data which is again in a csv file that i've already downloaded from the government site let's load it into our model go to our data view this is providing us with the preview of how our data looks 
Now the crux of this problem is that there is a bunch of data here which are all uncategorized but are all of different data types. So we're going to have to categorize these data. We have our data in dollars. We have our geographical values and our count. We don't want our BI to get confused with it. So let's just quickly categorize our data. So after all the formatting, this is what our data looks like. Let's go to our report view and start creating the dashboard. As I mentioned before, there are a bunch of different visualizations here. You have your bar charts, column charts, you have your line chart, you have your pie chart, donut chart, funnel chart, even maps. So according to our problem statement, I think we have to categorize it down by area, by pin code, by the costs, and by the cost covered. So let's get started. So with that, I think we've done the Medicare provider dashboard here. We can see the various number of people admitted due to different conditions. Here we can see the total number of patients and the average covered charges by Medicare. Here we can see the same thing. It's as interactive as it was in our report view. On the second page, we can see how widely spread is Medicare all around the globe. The sizes of these bubbles depict the number of patients 
and the color depicts the categories in which we had divided the medical cases. Here we can see the amount Medicare has covered according to different categories in different states. And with that, I would like to conclude my session. If you like our content and you want more videos on Power BI Desktop or any other topic, leave it in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you and have a great day ahead.